This is a WLBT 4.30 p.m. report. Stephanie Bell Flynn is out today, but we still have a medical guest with us today. We're talking about hematomas, and if you have questions, please send them to the doctors at WLBT.net. And joining us now is Dr. Moses Jones. He's with Baptist Neurosurgery and Spine Associates. Dr. Jones, thank you so much for being with us. Now, we've seen all the publicity that has surrounded the death of actress Natasha Richardson. She bumped her head in the snow on the bunny slope skiing, and a lot of people are asking, well, how hard did she hit her head? Did she hit something that was buried underneath the snow? What exactly happened? And so everyone is trying to understand exactly what is a hematoma. Okay. First, I think we have to make the point that we don't actually know what happened in that specific case. Uh, the usual circumstance requires a fairly substantial blow to the head before you'll get an intracranial hematoma. I don't think everyone needs to run out and worry that every time they bump their head, they're going to have this occur. This is a highly unlikely circumstance to fall on the bunny slope and end up with a uh, hematoma. However, we do see them frequently, mm -hmm. but usually associated with more severe trauma. Now, is that from people not wearing helmets, such as when they're riding motorcycles or bicycles, or is it just common falls in elderly people? What, when do we need to get concerned about when we actually hit our heads? I think the first uh, sign to be concerned about is any alteration in behavior. I think we get so hung up on, well, specific things to look at. I think the first thing that any layman should think of is if this individual is not acting properly or the way they normally act, you should be concerned. Uh, certainly any alteration in their speech, their movement, their ability to concentrate, their level of consciousness, and what we mean by that is someone becoming more sleepy, someone who's becoming agitated, excited, any of those would be signs to be very concerned about. However, I think as a general statement, I'll go back to the first thing I said, which is anything that's not normal, you need to have that person uh, investigated or uh, looked into. Now, you've brought some models for us to help people understand it, because I think we've all bumped our heads a time right. or two, you know, uh, hit it on that cabinet or something of that nature. But I, I guess, again, because this has been so publicized, many people are concerned. Right. Well, the first thing you have to think about is that your brain is generally protected by not only your scalp, which is your skin, but the bone, the skull. Right. The skull is that protective uh, helmet that we carry around all the time. So first off, you have to have a fairly substantial blow to, uh, to do damage within the skull itself. The problem is the brain is free-floating inside of here. It's not attached to the skull. It simply sits inside. So you can have injuries in which the brain and the skull move uh, not in congruence, but uh, one in one direction, one in another, and the brain basically slams into the side of the, of the skull. The other thing that can happen, and we may not be able to demonstrate this, is that there are blood vessels that run inside of the skull. In the Richardson case, these arteries more than likely uh, one of those was torn, detached, or something else happened to cause blood to accumulate between the brain, the outside covering of the brain, which is called the dura, and the skull, and that's what we call an epidural hematoma. If the blood accumulates between the brain and the covering, we call that a subdural hematoma. Okay. Two now different we, mechanisms. We have about 30 seconds left. If I'm a mom and my child comes and says that they've fallen off a bicycle, they've got a bobo on their head, what should I do? I think um, uh, if you are concerned, obviously take your child to a, a doctor or a hospital. Right. If the child is perfectly awake, alert, and it's a minor blow like kids get all the time, I think it's perfectly appropriate to watch the individual um, and if there's any change whatsoever, then for sure take them to your doctor. All right, and we should emphasize that we should always have helmets on, especially kids when riding bicycles or anything of that nature. Bicycles, uh, skating, skateboards, 
any kind of activity or any uh, sports activity, you should wear the appropriate protective gear. Football, hockey, all of those, should, you should wear the appropriate protective gear. Well, we have learned so much. Thank you for really explaining it in terms that we can understand because a lot of people have been very concerned about this, as we've said. And we want to thank again Dr. Moses Jones. Well, He's with Baptist Neurosurgery and Spine Associates. And, of course, for the latest health news anytime, you can visit our website at WLBT.com and click on Medical Matters.